What's up everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, I've got the brand new Blue Eddy EB3A power station. And if the direction that Blue Eddy has gone with this little guy is any indication of what's to come for their future power stations, I am incredibly excited. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware, they have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. So what we have here is Blue Eddy's smallest power station yet. It is a 268 watt hour power station, but it packs an incredible punch when it comes to the things that it can do and the things that it can power. Inside here is a 600 watt pure sign inverter. So 268 watt hours worth of battery, 600 watts worth of pure sign inverter, uh, gives you a lot of flexibility in the things that you can do. Uh, it's also got two standard USB-A ports. Do wish they were the, you know, slightly better quick charge ports. And one USB-C that is a PD100 power delivery port. It is just one way it, you can't charge through the USB-C port. Uh, so a total of three USB ports. It does have a regulated 12 volt outlet, which you would expect. It has two um, smaller barrel port DC output. So if you've got an adapter, if maybe you've got like a CPAP machine that runs off of uh, that style connector, you can power it no problem. And then it's got two, uh, two AC plugs there. And uh, of course, a little light um, that has, a, has a, a low, a high. And then if you get in trouble, you can you know, signal SOS for you know, rescue if, if, if you need to. Um, Two things that they have done that has really made this significantly better than their previous power stations. One is, uh, is the display. I've complained about the displays of Blue Eddies in the past, even though previous Blue Eddies have been my favorite power stations, their displays have been very mediocre. This one gives you everything you need. It gives you your watts input, it gives you your watts output, and it even gives you a, a, a time. So if you're inputting power, it tells you how much time till it's fully charged. If you're using power, it tells you how much time you have left. And then it gives you a very nice clear percentage of how much battery is left as opposed to just the little, little bar that, uh, that the previous Blue Eddies have. Although it does have a nice little, little circle gauge there. Um, so the display finally is as good if not maybe a little better than some of the competition and yay for Blue Eddy for improving their display. The second thing that they've done is they've gotten away from the charging brick. Um, let me, let's see, I've got one here. This is the, the charging brick for the Blue Eddy EB55. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a big one. And Blue Eddy's charging bricks have always uh, frustrated some people, never really bothered me but because the fan in them is quite loud. Um, so they've, they've, they've gotten rid of this. There's no more charging brick that you have to deal with. Now, all you have is just a simple cable. That's it. Um, this cable plugs into the front here. And that's where all the magic happened because this thing can be fully recharged in less than an hour which is unreal. I mean, there's, there's some other brands that have had the really fast charging, um, but I mean, Blue Eddy's done well, but you know, you've got the other brands that can charge in an hour and a half to two hours. Well, this is the very first power station that can fully recharge in under an hour, um, which makes how you use this compared to other similar, you know, the, the sub 300 watt power stations, uh, makes this one pretty significant.
Blue Eddy also has a, now a very nice app that you can fully control the Blue Eddy EB3A with. It not only tells you, you know, your battery percentage left, it tells you how much input you've got from which uh, source. It also tells you how much output you've got from each source. You can turn the different ports on and off. So you see the, oops, there we go. See the little green light just came on down there. Let's turn the AC port on. See that just came on down there. And if I want to, I can even power the, the whole thing on and off and control it all from this app, which is fantastic if you maybe got this in the back seat or maybe behind you in the back of your SUV or something, and you wanna be able to check on the status, um, turn things on and off as needed, that sort of stuff. Uh, the app is very handy, but I told you about the super fast AC charging. This thing does something really cool. You can go into the settings here and you can actually tweak the AC charging to three different methods. Let me plug this in and show you what it can do. Right now the power cord's plugged in and it is in the default standard mode, which is giving a very respectable 267 watts of input, uh, which for a 268 watt hour power station, we'll recharge this. It, it does slow down once it gets you know, to the peak to you know, kind of protect the batteries and that sort of stuff. So in about an hour and a half, on standard mode, you can recharge this thing. But maybe you you have an inverter or something that uh, can't handle that much power. Well, in the app, I can go here, click on silent mode. It gives you a little, um, you know, a little message of what it does. It slows down the fan speed to reduce noise. Although this thing, I've never heard it be loud. Um, so now it's in silent mode, and you can see the power coming down. So it keeps it at around 100 watts of input um, there on standard mode. So if you, if you need to you know, make sure this is quiet or if you have some need to recharge it at a, a slower wattage, you can. But then they've got this amazing little thing called turbo. So let's click the turbo and see what happens. You get a warning there that tells you what it does. And hey, this is a, you know, use this only when you need it because using this mode all the time can affect uh, the, the batteries uh, throughout its lifespan. So if you just leave it in turbo, you're not gonna get the full life out of it. So do it okay. Now let's see what happens. Four hundred and thirty watts of input in turbo mode. That is insane for a 268 watt hour power station. So in, if I left this in turbo mode in under an hour, I mean, this thing's fully charged. Um, it's, uh, that's nuts. 430 watts for a 268 hour power station. Uh, so let's turn this back to standard. And there we go. Another thing you can do in the app is activate what's called power lifting, which is an interesting name. But what that does when you turn it on is I told you this has a 600 watt pure sign inverter. Well, in power lifting mode, this will allow you to run things that use as much as 1200 watts. It does that by modulating the amps and the volts so that you don't exceed a total of 600 watts, but the device thinks it's getting the required voltage. Um, so it's not a true 1200 watts, but I mean, if you're, you know, need to run something like a, a you know, a coffee pot or um, a hair dryer or, you know, some other kind of cooking appliance kind of thing, you can do it. Um, you know, you're not gonna, you don't wanna use that for electronics because um, that's not good for the electronics. Uh, another thing you can do is put it in eco mode. Uh, by default, it's off, so yay for that. Um, a lot of people get uh, very upset when they're trying to charge things. Maybe they've got a fridge plugged in and the fridge is cycling on and off. And while it's cycled off, the power station thinks, oh, there's nothing using me. I'm gonna go to sleep now. And then all your food goes bad. Um, so this, if you choose to have eco mode turned on, uh, you can turn it on and then set, um, let me turn it on. And you got a little eco that comes up here on the top. And then you can change it four hours, three hours, two hours, one hour, um, if you want the eco mode on. And you can even control, uh, control your light here from the app. So, you know, that's kind of cool. 
and you can upgrade the firmware, um, you know, because Blue Eddy can do some things to this and make it, you know, do, do more and do better. And so you got firmware upgrades now on your power station. In addition to the three modes of AC charging, you also have your standard um, MPPT input here. So you can plug in up to 200 watts of solar, which for a power station this size is fantastic. And, you know, obviously you can plug it into a, a car charger port uh, as well. Another cool feature that the EB3A has is you can use it as an actual UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. Uh, so, you know, you've got maybe your computer at home that you, if there's a power outage, you don't want it to shut off. You can actually plug your computer into this, plug this into the wall. And in the case of a power outage, the power shifts over from the wall to the power station and you don't lose your data. Uh, so this can actually function as a UPS, which is pretty darn handy to have, you know, for, you know, if you live in an area that's prone to power outages and stuff and you work from home, this can come in really handy. Now the battery chemistry in this is lithium iron phosphate batteries, which means this has a very impressive 2,500 cycles to hit 80% capacity, uh, which means this thing's gonna last you a very long time. In addition, this has a two year warranty, which is pretty standard in the industry. A lot of power stations in this, uh, you know, in this power range will only come with, with one year. So the fact that this has two years is, is pretty good. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I do review quite a few power stations. Uh, and most of the ones I've done lately have been really big ones, like 1,000 watts to 2,000 watt hours. Um, the really big power stations. And you, you may be wondering, you know, for a power station that's only 268 watt hours, what's the use case for this? Well, my wife and I just got back from a trip to Colorado. We were gone for 10 days. And this little guy lived in the back of her Wrangler and had all the duties of keeping all of her uh, camera batteries and electronics and the little fridge that she carried in her, in her Wrangler. This one kept all that running. And here's how we had that set up. Um, this was in the back on the floor, had, the, uh, had a 12 volt power source uh, plugged in here into her cigarette lighter. Um, the, the AC power input is a little, is a little picky. Uh, we couldn't plug it into the AC adapter in her Jeep or in my Gladiator because it does want to have a pure sign um, power coming into it and the inverters built into our Jeeps are modified sine wave. So uh, it, it wasn't very friendly to this, so we couldn't run it off the AC. But I mean, you can get 100 watts input off the DC adapter and so that's what we did and it worked fantastic. So we had that plugged in here and then we just plugged everything into it. We had everything like, uh, let's see, we, we had radios plugged in charging. So, uh, so she always had a radio that we could communicate from. Uh, she had um, camera batteries like this one, like these plugged into USB port. And then, I mean, she has her own drone, so you know, she had her drone batteries plugged in all the time so that as soon as she used one, she could put it on the charger, have another one fresh and ready. Uh, camera batteries for the main camera were plugged in. There we go. And then it had a fridge plugged into this. And so while she was moving, the Jeep was charging this. And as needed, things were being charged from this. The fridge was running. And when she, you know, stopped and we stopped for lunch and shut off the Jeep. This would keep everything going. And then when she restarted and kept going, this would start charging again. Uh, when we got to camp, um, this had enough power to keep the fridge running overnight until we were on the move again the next day. And uh, for my purposes, you know, occasionally at camp, I would have to edit. So you know, I get my laptop and plug it into the uh, USB-C port here and there we go. And so, you know, if you're in a situation where you're, where you're camping or, you know, in your vehicle on the move and you need to keep a number of things charged, that is where a little power station like this really comes in handy and is, is what it's perfect to, to be used for. If all you're doing is, you know, keeping electronics charged, having a big massive, you know, 1,000 watt, 1,500 watt hour power station is pretty overkill. So a situation like this, have all this stuff plugged into it, 
have this plugged into the Jeep so that it is you know, charging when the Jeep is on. It worked fantastic for 10 days. Uh, we did not have a single issue out of it. And I highly recommend, you know, for that type of situation, this little guy is fantastic for. And then in addition to everything else that you can charge with it, um, one thing I love about Blue Eddies is they all have a wireless charging pad on top. So all you gotta do is set your phone down, maybe your AirPods, anything that uh, can use a wireless charging pad, uh, this thing can do it. So I, I love the fact that if you got this out at camp and charging some things, but you need to charge your phone, just drop it on there and boom, it starts charging. Now one of the things that a power station of this size is not gonna be great for is, yeah, high wattage appliances, power tools, that sort of thing. Yeah, so things like a, a toaster oven, a, a, a griddle cooktop, waffle maker, um, you know, hair dryers, that sort of thing. You know, you're not gonna get the, the, the best power to be able to run those things. I did try this to run my toaster with it this morning. It, uh, you know, gave it an overload because only 600 watts. So just to see how much power this thing could really use, uh, I grabbed a hair dryer and you know, I thought I would see if 600 watts is enough to run a hair dryer. So let's put it on low. So on low, this is pulling just over 400 watts, which is, is perfect. I mean, if you're, you know, if, if you're at camp and you know, your wife took a little shower or took, went swimming and wants to dry her hair off afterwards. This actually, you know, on low would work great. But let's see if it'll go on high. A little bit. What are we doing? 630 watts. 635. Let's see if it'll sustain. Oh, there it goes. Now it got the, uh, the overload. So it sustained 630 watts for a while, but uh, it, did, it did trip it and... and Chip the overload protection. So on low hair dryer, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I've never had a, a sub 300 watt power station that could run a hair dryer before. So that's pretty impressive. Now, anytime I do a power station test, one of the tests that I run is on our Dometic CFX 355IM 12 volt fridge. Uh, we keep it inside the house where it's set at 74 degrees. We put two two liter bottles of water in there just to kind of help regulate the temperature. And then I plug it into this and see how long it will last. Like I said, this is the smallest power station I've ever tested before. And this one came in at a very respectable 18 hours and 24 minutes. So if you're needing to run a 12 volt fridge at camp, maybe overnight to protect your star battery, that sort of thing, uh, this little guy, can, you know, can keep your fridge running overnight just fine, and then you can recharge it when you're on the move the next day. Um, it, it works pretty darn good. Now let's talk about the price. Uh, right now on Blue Eddie's website, this thing is only $239, which for a 268 watt hour power station, you're looking at what, 80 to quick 85-ish cents a watt hour, which is pretty darn good. Um, you know, some power stations push a dollar or more a watt hour. So, you know, 85 ish, 86 cents a watt hour is pretty respectable and a pretty good value. Now, the main gripe that I have with the Blue Eddy EB3A um, is what's in the box because uh, you, you get, uh, you do get a very nice owner's manual. Um, it, it goes into all the details of everything that it can do, um, you know, what you'd expect, good owner's manual. But the only thing else you get is this power cord. Uh, you do not get a 12 volt adapter. You do not get the MC4 solar connector that you in the past have gotten with every other uh, Blue Eddy power station that I've reviewed. Uh, I'm sure that's just a means to cut costs, but still I think it's a, a major oversight. Now you can get the accessories from Blue Eddy's website. Uh, I mean, the DC charger is only like 10 bucks. So if you're gonna order this, definitely pick that up too. If you're gonna do solar panels, get the MC4 adapters for your solar panels. Um, yeah, so I, I, I do wish Blue Eddy included those two cords with this because I, I think they're necessary, but uh, all, all you get is this. So that's, of, of all the things with this, that's really my main gripe is that you don't get the two extra cords and that you have to pay a little bit extra to get those. 
But other than that, I can't find anything else to, to fault this thing with. I, I mean, the USB ports would be better if they were the new, you know, the quick charge ports, not just the standard USB A ports. And I mean, other than that, this little power station is just amazing. There is a link in the description uh, to Blue Eddie's website, also an Amazon link. So go check it out for the value for, you know, if, if you just need to keep things charged, I, I think this is at, hands down the go-to power station. And it worked great on our trip to Colorado. We're gonna, we got another trip to Colorado. This thing's gonna be serving, uh, serving my, in my wife's Jeep for that trip as well. And it, it's just a fantastic little power station. And like I said, if this is the, the future of Blue Eddie's power stations, then I'm excited. I cannot wait. You know, if they update the EB55 and the EB70 to the EB70A, um, you know, with this fast charging and display and stuff, oh my gosh, it's going to be incredible. So I'm, I'm going to be watching Blue Eddie for that. And it, I hope so. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, is this uh, is this a good size for you? Is this maybe too small? Do you um, you know, let me know. I, I just think this is. This is great for keeping electronics charged and that's what it's perfect for. So let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, give the video a like if you would please. That helps YouTube uh, get it out there. It helps, helps that pesky little algorithm uh, do its thing. And um, be sure and subscribe. We've got a goal of hitting 75,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And so if you're watching this video and you are not subscribed, just, just go hit the subscribe button please. Thank you. And if you like what we're doing and you like the content that we're putting out, both in gear reviews and in our, our trip videos, uh, and you like what we're doing and you want to uh, support us, check out the Patreon link in the description. We do some special content for our patrons. We do special events. We uh, share all of our GPS data with our patron supporters. So if, if you like what we're doing, go check that out. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.